So what I have done for my database's final project is create a music explorer that will allow a user to query on a database. It's the Music Brains uh, database, which is an open source database that has a lot of metadata about um, uh, for, for, for a lot of music. So um, just a quick overview. So you see, you'll get your results tab uh, up here and followed by a search tab that has various things that we will go over and also a search for blank on YouTube that we will see more of. So starting off, we can just start with an uh, artist, artist search, um, which will just return a list of artists based on who you, um, or what you put in. So we see we did the strokes. Um, so we'll do more on the strokes. So let's say we want to do album, but we don't want to say specific album. Uh, we can we have these toggleable buttons here that can allow you to see all. We also have this for song, which we'll demonstrate later. But for now, we'll just do a uh, see all for the albums. So if we hit that search again, now we can see albums released by The Strokes. Uh, we get a lot of results here. Let's say I'm interested because I know they had a release this year. Let's say I'm interested in uh, only the album they released this year. Maybe we can do a filter year by 2020 and we'll say exact. Again, uh, there's also options for filtering before, uh, exactly, or after the year that you put in. So we're going to say exact, search, and we see the new abnormal returned. Uh, again, you get some, uh, just clarify, uh, you get some duplicate entries sometimes. Uh, I think this is just has to do with the uh, entry method into the database that is uh, happening on the music brain side, I believe. Um, if I had more time, I would say I would like to uh, maybe work on a way that um, can display only unique results to uh, ignore these duplicate entries, but it's, it's not uh, too bad. All right, so we're interested in this album. Uh, if I give it a double click, you'll see it auto fills in, so you don't have to actually uh, type it in. So let's uh, we'll deselect this, deselect this, uh, and then let's just view all these songs now. So we used to see all on the songs. Hit the search. Uh, give it a second. All right. So now we can see from here to here, we have all the songs off of the album, the new abnormal by the artist, The Strokes. And then following is just uh, some other results that you get uh, just based on what's in there. But uh, these, these are the main ones that we're focused on. Um, so if you've noticed while I'm uh, searching or adding new things, uh, we automatically have this search for uh, and then whatever on YouTube. This is basically just being built by what the user has in the um, in their things. So let's say we select a, a certain song. So you'll see it will say search for selfless by, well, selfless, the strokes, the new abnormal, basically hitting all the keywords that you have here. Uh, if we hit the go button, it's going to open up my browser and it's going to automatically take us to YouTube with the uh, search already done. And then from there, you can just easily go into the uh, song or whatever that you're searching for. Uh, so carrying on, uh, let's see, so that's most of the regular features. Uh, let's say, all right, so we'll talk about this filter by range. So let's say we do, let's move on to another, we'll say the Beatles, and we'll do an album search. Um, so let's see, what we get is, uh, let's see, some 95, 87, uh, some older, uh, some are remakes. Um, and stuff like that. So let's say we're more interested in, uh, let's say we're interested in uh, 1960 to 1970 Beatles. And if we just hit include, then we should only see results from 1960 to 1970. Let's see things like Revolver, uh, there's Please Please Me, uh, Abbey Road, stuff like that. Uh, you can also do the opposite, obviously, and just exclude it. 
to a search and it will exclude anything from 1960 to 1970. If you want to see more older stuff. Um, let's see. If I want to actually, uh, we'll say like, just to show off the proof of concept of the uh, actual entries, since I haven't, I've only used the CLs and the autofills for the albums, but uh, switching that, you get Revolver back. Uh, you can also do it without the artist. You don't need the artist there. You will see, you'll get some more, uh, some. Di you won't you just get directly the Beatles. You get a lot more uh, other things, but you'll find it eventually. But uh, it's basically because there's no uh, weighted weighted search algorithm or anything like that. So you're just gonna get back what what the Music Brains database gives you back. Um. Let's see, uh, we're also, ex <laughs> I just realized we're also still excluding by range, so that could also be affecting it. Uh, that's, a, that's a little better. Uh, and then uh, also, let's see, so if we do just a song search, um, we'll do Eleanor Rigby by the Beatles. Oh, look at that, we actually don't get it. So this could actually be a good point. Um, let me take this off because I know it's in here. So here, hold on. Actually, so if I just do a full search without the filter, so I see Eleanor Rigby again. This goes back to the uh, no weighted search or anything like that. So the most popular song titled Eleanor Rigby is most likely the one by the Beatles. Um, however, when you search this, you don't get the return from the Beatles. This is because uh, the query is. Um, limited to 100 uh, searches, so that you're only going to see 100 here, even with this uh, this filter is just taking this uh, 100 that you get back and filtering it. So it's not actually just going to exclusively search the database for uh, 1960 to 1970 songs titled Ellen Rigby. Uh, so this is just basically uh, the Beatles one just is not in the first 100 that the database returned. Um, Again, if we just add the artist filter, then we should, uh, we'll see it, or we'll see more, yeah. But yeah, that is a, it, it, it's, it, it can be a little complicated when, uh, when you get return results like that. Um, I'm not really sure if there's a way I, that I could fix it, um, because again, I just don't think the, uh, database really, or the, the queries in the database, I don't really think can account for it. But um, I think that's pretty much all that I have um, for the actual functionality uh, for the sake of everything. I'm just going to put this in because now I'm going to cover the code itself. I'll just leave this up that I'll probably uh, refer back to this example to uh, just point some things out as I go through the source code. All right, just leave this off here to the side. So the way this was built, this was built in Python uh, using uh, tkinter for the uh, GUI, uh, the Music Brains library, and web browser is used for the um, for the YouTube search. So setting our user agent, uh, initializing the main window. Here's just the frames. So you see, I used uh, label frames. Just what you see: results, search, uh, go to YouTube. That's what those are. Uh, just setting the other frames, packing the frames. The tree view is what the results uh, results tab is. Uh, it's using a uh, tree view, which is uh, using TTK through TKinter. Uh, and uh, see the headings for the tree view. Uh, so scroll bar, so we can scroll through the results easily. Uh, going to the variables. Um, a lot of uh, sh string variables used uh, for these are entered uh, bits and pieces. Then we also have some bools that we use for um, seeing whether or not some buttons are toggled, which we'll see more. Uh, here you can see the double click event. Uh, so this is what's uh, when you, sele uh, you get the selection and then uh, setting all the values according to what that selection is. So that's what you see when you do the um, how it auto fills in the things. And this is just uh, defining the double click for the tree view. All right, so 
let's see. So this is uh, getting the release for a song or getting the album. Oh yeah, okay. So this is um, a function here. So it'd probably be better for me to show. Let's go. Let's go down to what actually happens when you uh, click. So if down here is where I have the uh, buttons and stuff like that and the things you see in the search, this is what we're most interested in. Okay, so the search is basically just going to, um, when you press it, it's just, this is basically just determining which, uh, which search should be done based on what's entered. So uh, this is just a basic check for the wildcards, uh, basically just saying that if you have the song wildcard selected, then the song wildcard should be used. Uh, so the song search uh, takes the highest priority because if you have anything entered in the song, it needs to do a song search. Um, then next would be an album search. So you have anything there, but nothing in the song, then do an album search. And then if not an album search, then um, then you'll do an artist search. So let's go up to those actual artist, uh, artist searches. Try to remember where I have those. See a lot of uh, toggle stuff. Okay, so here we go. Artist search. So, artist search basically is we uh, build this query uh, against the using the library that's provided, um, and then we'll do a search artist. Uh, basically, we're just going to grab the string uh, variable that we have for the or that the user provided, and it's limit 100 is basically just uh, defining the uh, 100 search results. This, uh, according to their documentation, 100 is the, the the max you can do. You can't take this any further. So it's not. I'm not just limiting it to a 100. That is just the max results I can get. Uh, and then we're just going through the update artist, which is uh, basically what's going to display it on the tree, and then updating the uh, YouTube query to match the new entry. And this is basically the same uh, throughout. And we'll skip down here to the album search. Uh, just basically, we're going to get the release, which is what they have entered in the album part. And then we can also grab the artist name as well if that's entered. Uh, if it's blank, it's, it's not going to affect the search. But uh, that can help uh, get better results. And similar uh, thing to the song search, where yeah, you have the recording, which is in the uh, song query get. Uh, artist name, which is in the artist release, and limit to 100. But they all follow the same thing, where basically we execute the query, we update the results in the tree, and then we update the YouTube query. So if we go up to these updates, so these get a little trickier. Uh, so update artist is pretty straightforward. It's basically just going through. So basically those uh, those queries return dictionaries, and you're able to just uh, iterate through the dictionary and just insert into the tree view and we always start with this uh, delete here just to clear the table um, so the artist one is pretty straightforward the song one uh, again gets a little trickier because basically we have all these um, different the, the, the filters and stuff like that so you can't really filter on the artist that's why the artist is straightforward but we go in here so if uh, if we're doing the year before we have to filter on the date uh, the exact year, the year after, if we're doing the include range, if we're uh, excluding the range, or if there's just no filter. But overall, it's still roughly the same, where we're just iterating through the dictionary and um, inserting the values into the tree view. Uh, similar, uh, similar thing going on with the album here, where it's got all the filters includes so you see the uh, the date so the date's a little trickier so I will explain that let's jump up let's back to that function that we uh, we're talking about and it says get release so um, the problem I had was that some songs uh, the dictionary they would return with um, they would return with multiple uh, albums associated with them uh, and uh, they weren't in a particular order either. So basically, you could get you could get a song, and it would return like 
now that's what I call Music 25 as their album. Instead of the actual album they would be associated with. Uh, so basically what this function is doing is uh, it's going through the release list and, and searching for the dates and basically it's just going to find the first date associated with that uh, re release to uh, try to get the most accurate uh, release for it and it seems to be uh, it seems to have uh, solved the issue pretty well at least from what I have seen uh, so yeah it's, it's basically just a simple uh, find the min the minimum going through the date uh, and this is just basically doing a lot of substring matching uh, so we start with the year uh, then month uh, and then day um, apart from that let's see let's check valid year this is basically just making sure that uh, this is just some error checking for the year part that basically will make it so you can't enter uh, you can't enter faulty years so you see you get this error in valid year format use the format so and so uh, this goes the same with like the filter by range where it has the uh, has the same thing and you can also see uh, you cannot do a uh, faulty range like this where I have the before and after there should give you a warning invalid range um let's see so that's yeah, basically this is just basically just error checking on the uh, on the inputs there to make sure that everything's uh, good there and let's see what else is there to cover Queries. Oh, so let's talk about the uh, YouTube part. That's a uh, that's a good one. Uh, here's the clear all thing, which is basically just setting everything uh, back to just its initial state. So the YouTube search. So we'll start with the update uh, YT, and then we'll get into this. So uh, basically, what it's doing is it's just going to start. It's going to start with your song query, uh, and then add it to basically just adding this to a uh, string variable. Uh, concatenating it, everything, and uh, we'll do the artist, and then we'll do the album, and we'll go ahead and set it. Now, when we execute the uh, YouTube search, basically uh, we're going to get. Uh, it's just preventing so you don't do. You can't just uh, search it when there's where there's nothing there. Basically, we're just going to take it. We're going to split it by a space, and then uh, we're going to build the query using. Um, Basically, just uh, the word, and then followed by a plus sign. Uh, and we do we avoid the ampersand and the question mark because those can uh, lead to worse queries. And then when we build the URL, it's basically just going to be that uh, those words uh, with the pluses on top of this. So if we go back to the search query that I had, you can see. This is how a YouTube search query is built, where basically you see search query equals, and then you can see that we had selfless plus the plus strokes plus so on and so forth to the end. So that's basically just how it's building this URL. And then the, if we go back, um, and then you just use the web browser to just open that uh, URL that you've built. Uh, pretty straightforward there. Um, going on, so this is just, um, this is all just the GUI stuff for the uh, most, uh, it's, it's just all the search stuff. So you see all the artist song, album, year filter, all that stuff, just basically uh, GUI elements. And finally ending on um, the render uh, to display the window. Uh, so that's, uh, that's, that's it. Um, that's all I really have. Uh, all of this uh, source code will be on a GitHub repository. So if you'd like to take a closer look at uh, things or how something works, uh, feel free to look at the code. All this code be included. Um, only thing you need to do to uh, run this on your machine, uh, just have Python and uh, you're going to need to do a pip install for the Music Brains library and then you should be able to uh, run this program. Um, 
apart from that, I do not believe that there's anything else. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with how this uh, project turned out. It's the first time I've used uh, TKinter for anything. Um, for anything other than, or it's, it's the first time I've used TKinter. It's the first time I've built a GUI really for a project either. So I'm I'm pretty satisfied with uh, how everything turned out and how everything uh, is working. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you all for watching.